Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com up here at TIFF, Tobias Lindholm, Soren Marling. Um, firstly, congratulations on the early buzz. I know the film premieres here tonight, but you've already got critics saying that Paul Greengrass, who also has a movie come out about you know pirates taking a, a ship hostage, that he better be worried. What does that feel like to you, having that kind of early feedback? Well, I mean, the fact that it was very hard, under very hard conditions we did this film, so the fact that people are enjoying it already, and we, we premiered in Venice last week, and to, to bring that bus with us over here and, and actually get into Toronto uh, with the feeling that it, always been, it has already uh, been reviewed, it's a great feeling. And, and you know, like, Soren, I mean, this film, obviously, it's an intense thriller. You're, more, like, known primarily as a comedian as well, you know, so... So, and doing comedy, how, how much of a transition is it for you to be in this sort of situation that, that uh, Tobias has put you in? Well, you know, uh, I mean, to begin with, uh, Tobias asked me to, uh, to uh, do this part in his movie, and uh, he had one thing he wanted me, to, wanted me not to do, to be funny. <laughs> he specifically asked for that. I would love you to do the part, but you cannot be funny. <laughs> and I think it was very provoking in a way, so I said, okay, I'll take that challenge. And uh, now we got the result, so I think, uh, I, I told him one joke or something. <laughs> one joke, we, we, yeah. And that's, that's it. Yeah. I almost cut it out, but we live. <laughs> but was that, was that like part of the reason for casting him as well? I know you guys worked together on, your, on the TV series that you were writing on, yeah. but, um, but to have that dichotomy of casting someone kind of against their natural association? Yeah, you can say that. And I mean, uh, for me, Søren's uh, uh, comedian timing it's, it's brilliant if we can turn that into a tragic or a dramatic timing instead then we would get something that nobody had seen before with, with Soren and I mean I needed to, to on a film like this where we, we did a very tight script but we, we, we tried to improvise as well on set uh, shooting uh, on a ship in the Indian Ocean and shooting in the shipping company in Denmark so I needed some guys that I trust with my life and I do that with, with Soren and Pilou so we just needed to get Soren in not being funny shape and then, uh, then take it from there I mean they take huge responsibility in a film like this because we have takes that are one hour, one and a half hour. I mean, they need to just keep going. Uh, so small rules and then just trust that they can actually uh, live, up to the, live up to the trust. Was that like a challenge that you set for yourself? I mean, shooting, choosing to shoot on the, what is open ocean, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like obviously that presents its own problems, but um, was, that, was, that, was it problematic or more problematic than you thought it was going to be? Or, or was it easier than you thought it was going to be? I was hard. It was hard. I mean, we got one big gift. We rented a boat in Mombasa, Kenya, and sailed out into the Indian Ocean. And after we, 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 we rented the boat, we discovered that that ship actually had been hijacked. And the sailors uh, working there had been hostages in, in the situation that we were filming about. So suddenly we had uh, witnesses and experts uh, in the area on the boat. I mean, they knew exactly how the pirates would behave, not on any boat, but specifically on the boat we were shooting at. So that was a big gift. But of course, the waves, the weather, uh, the light that just turns off when you're around the equator. That kind of challenges were hard for us, and the heat. But I mean, the, the whole reason to go out there was to, to get that reality in the film. I mean, the guns that the pirates have are actually guns that the Kenyan uh, police have taken from pirates. Uh, so we needed all kinds of elements of reality in the film to, to set us free to actually just make, uh, make the story instead of trying to come up with, with, the, with the surroundings. I mean, we had them, so we could just take it from there. Did it also create a sense of cabin fever, having everyone out there like that? And perhaps, do you think like it really added to the performance in terms of making them feel like they were kind of trapped on there? Yeah, for me there was no doubt that the, the fact that we, they knew that we needed to bring on our guards when we were sailing out because we just went out into the soup where everybody's around. Yeah. And, uh, and the fact that we, we took a little risk there made everybody a little nervous. And, and that focused everybody. And, and then at the same time, when we had real hostages that had actually lived through the story, uh, there was some kind of uh, respectful uh, um, environment to work in on the boat. Nobody wanted to make fun while being there because these guys were actually uh, old hostages. And even though it's based on a fictional situation, this Danish freighter out in the Indian Ocean, uh, did you look at any, which, which, was there a specific incident or a couple of specific incidents that really kind of brought the point home for you that you really wanted to take elements from? Well, we. We, we discovered the, 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 the hijacking of a Danish ship called CEC Future, a Danish uh, company called Clipper Group. They had a ship hijacked in 2009, and I followed that in the press, and that was kind of the key to get into to the world of negotiation. At a point, I just wanted to put the film on the boat, 
but discovering that negotiation stuff uh, really really turned us on. So we researched a lot with them. It's not built on their story, but they allowed us to look a lot in, in the, into, into their material, and they present us to their colleagues that have been in the same situation. So, I mean, it's all amongst from, from maybe five, ten different hijackings that we took and, and tried to fit into this story. Um, obviously, a lot of people know your work as a screenwriter as well. I can the film The Hunt with Mads Mikkelsen put him on the world stage. It looks like he's going to get a lot of jobs coming out of that film as well. For you, was screenwriting always a stepping stone to directing or was it something that, an opportunity that came later? It was an opportunity that came later. For me, I am a screenwriter and I mean, I, I really don't like people that much. So, so to, uh, for me, I, I like my coffee on my computer and then once in a while I love to go out and, and, and be in control of a project. And after doing a hijacking, I felt, I'm more I would see, eager to do a project again. It was very fun to do. And, and, and the fact that we went out there into reality and just, just did it crazy out in the Indian Ocean was, uh, yeah, for me, fun to do. So I'm, I'm basically a screenwriter, but definitely for the right projects, I, I want to direct as well. And so, and like being reunited with Pillu and, and obviously having worked with Tobias as well, does, it, does that add to like just the, the camaraderie, the feeling that you've got, like this kind of cool team? Is that is that a, a really nice feeling for an actor? I imagine it would be. For us, I think yeah. it would. But you know, honestly, I, I, did, I don't have any scene with Pillu. Right. So I was only with Tobias all the, all the time, <laughs> and Tobias were with Pillu in Africa. So uh, yeah, of course we knew each other a lot, and we had this camaraderie, which uh, had a you know kind of ground feeling of we can do this, and you know, and we shaked hands before we started shooting. Like okay, let's do it, and let's uh, let's let's stay in touch in touch all the fucking times, and we can really feel what's going on here. But now, like you get to tour with the movie together, so it's kind of like now you get to reunite, right? Yeah. So what does it feel like? I mean, you just played Venice, showed it to an audience there, obviously a very different audience to the one here. Um, is that one of the kind of more interesting things for you, is like taking a film from Scandinavia, playing it in Europe, playing it in North America, and really kind of getting a vibe for how like different parts of the world feel about these, these kind of subjects? Of course, definitely yes, but for me, it's, uh, I've always been inspired by the American uh, films. I mean, in, in Europe, we have a tendency to be very obsessed with psychology and characters and going digging into them, and I mean, in the US it seems more like, the, uh, in North America, it's more like a profession-driven character. He's always a sheriff who then gets divorced. It's not like a divorce and then also he's a sheriff. And I like that kind of storytelling. So, so for me, I'm, I'm on the shoulders of, of the guys in the 70s, so, so to, to, to be able to bring it here is, of course, amazing. Yeah, and like some people talk about American movies, Anytime you hear about a ship cook on a boat, like uh, you know, <laughs> acting out, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone thinks about Steven Seagal and Under Siege. So at least it's a comedic reference for you guys, <laughs> not a direct yeah, exactly. comparison. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with us. We appreciate okay. you coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.